to the win. Uh, but we'll uh, talk all <laughs> things Eagles and NFL draft with uh, Jeff Kerr coming up in less than 20 minutes. And yes, our number two, Dave Zingaro, is going to jump aboard. All right, Johnny Maxwell, I do my CBS show yesterday, um, last night, and uh, my producer tells me, did you see the tweet on OBJ? And I had not. And uh, I guess the only NFL Network yeah. guys got it because it was Garofolo and Ian Rappaport. Uh, the OBJ. On Saturday, I had uh, read that the Jets were bringing him in, going to do a complete so physical. Close. And yeah. that when you do that, when, when a guy who's been out for an entire year uh, agrees to a complete physical, that means they're close to a deal. That they're, they're damn close to a deal. So I said, he's going to be landing with the Jets. Depending on what the dollar figure was, I, I was kind of hit or miss on whether it was a good idea or not. We know he's got the talent to be a star wide receiver, but we've seen a lot of OBJ DNPs did not play. He missed the entire year last year. And the rumors were out there that he was asking for $20 million for one season, which I thought was outrageous. He got pretty close to it, John. Apparently, he parachuted from the plane from Miami to New York out over Baltimore and got out there and signed a one-year deal with the Ravens for $18 million, $15 million of which is guaranteed. He's got like $3 million in incentives. Um, is this an attempt to assuade uh, Lamar Jackson that the Ravens are really in it to win it and that they oh, need yeah. him and want him? Yeah, no question about it. And those two evidently been talking for a while about teaming up to win a Super Bowl in Baltimore. So I think this is a clear indication that uh, Lamar's going to be back in Baltimore, at least for the year. Um, and they'll try to, you know, catch lightning in a bottle. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, it, the Jets did this thing the right. I wouldn't be upset if I were a Jets fan. I'm not paying this guy $15 million. He's played, I don't know, how many, like 21 games in three years. He hasn't, if, if you add up his last three seasons, he doesn't have a thousand yards. And, you know, so this is not the old Del Beckham of old. You know, maybe they catch lightning in a bottle. But I mean, this is like Rashad Penny, you know? I mean, he's never on the field. Except you're paying a fifteen million dollars, not two million dollars. Right. Actually, one six hundred grand for Rashad Penny. I mean, it's a dumb deal, and you're trying to assuage the quarterback to come back. And maybe they catch lightning in a bottle. Yeah, it's possible, but I don't. And we think talked it's... last week about the at least my belief, and I think you're with me on this. We just disagree on who the best player, best fit might be, who's still out there on the free agent market. That the Eagles need to upgrade wide receiver three. Oh, we were never talking about Odell Beckham Jr. No. because we knew he was going to get paid something. Uh, Eighteen million dollars? Yeah. No, I, no, I, I, I laughed when I read that he was asking for twenty in a season where both you and I have agreed and talked about this plenty. There's a couple of positions in the NFL that really didn't get paid this year. The cap went up again. Uh, it will go up even more in future years because the TV contracts are going to get more uh, uh, heavily funded. And uh, we're believing the teams are pushing money down the road because of that, uh, because of the even bigger salary cap increases. But it increased a good chunk this year. And it hasn't been all that visual in the free agent market. A couple of guys, a couple of positions got paid, but not all of them. And up until Odell Beckham Jr. signed, the wide receiver market wasn't all that vibrant either. That's why I was thinking maybe the Eagles could get a talented player at wide receiver three for another bargain basement type deal that Howie Roseman has been cutting plenty of them during this offseason. Does this is an outlier, right? This isn't, uh -oh, yeah, Odell. but especially at this point, it's an outlier, you know, where everybody's budgeted and the fact that he got this much money. And, uh, you know, and you mentioned, I, I think, the highest paid uh receiver on the market before OBJ, at least a annual, was Alan Lazar. Oh, it's the Jets, yeah, yeah, Jets so, are gonna have number one and number two if they signed Odell Beckham Jr., yeah. So, and you already have Garrett Wilson with the Jets. So what the, I, I never understood the fit other than they want to do everything to make Aaron Rodgers happy when he arrives, similar to what Baltimore's doing. Boy, these quarterbacks have some power, man. Um, but uh, I never understood the, the fit from a Jets standpoint. I guess if you get him for 10 million or something like that, all right. 
you know, who cares? Yeah, a whole bunch of incentives. If we're talking yeah. uh, five to ten million and another seven or eight million incentives, well, then he blows out his knee again. Then uh, guess what? You yeah. don't get any of those. Well, incentives. and even one year. I mean, the one thing, and I think you brought this up last week. Nobody's, everybody's getting one year deals. And and I forget who we were talking with, and and I agreed with them. Maybe you remember. Um, there's not as many dumb teams as there used to be. So even if you sign, like I think this is a pretty dumb contract, but they had to go where they had to go. But at the end of the day, it's one year, right? And you're done with it. So I mean, how bad could it be? Uh, you you kind of forget about it. You you take your medicine. It's over and you move in another direction next next season. So I think, you know, there are fewer dumb teams, um, and, you know, there are more short-term contracts. Um, and, yeah, I mean, you can get out of it. Worst-case scenario, he plays six games again. You get nothing out of him, 300 yards, 350 yards. And, again, it, it's bad for one season, but you're out of it. So it, that I can't be too over the top, but yeah, I mean, I was stunned how much money he got. Uh, it, again, 2019, I'm, I'm just looking it up. 2019 is the last time he was over a thousand yards. So what is the difference? You know, 2020 he played seven games, uh, 2021. Well, he did play a lot of games, but then tore his ACL because remember he went from Cleveland to the Rams. So it's actually uh, two season because I was looking at the split, but nonetheless, you can say three because he didn't play last year. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, yes, and three because he didn't play last year. So if you look at the three seasons, um, and he would have been able to play late last season if he wanted to, but he didn't want to because nobody was going to give him the money to make it worth his while at that point. So if you look at that, you know, it's probably a positive when you're coming back from the ACL to sit out that entire season. But at the end of the day, I mean, there's, we're talking 2019 before he was even, and, and by the way, in 2019, Jody, he wasn't what he was with the giants. No early in his career. I mean, early in his career, those first probably three seasons, it was, you know, he set the historic records that Jefferson just broke, you know, he, he was at that level. Um, it's been a long time since he's been at that level. And that's why I always try and uh, educate calls when I go, he's going to be a Hall of Famer. You can be on a Hall of Fame track. You can yeah. be trending toward becoming a Hall of Famer. But nobody makes the Hall of Fame in their first three years. And in a sport like football where injuries as prevalent as they are, yeah, you can have your career, career derailed. So right now, I would no longer say that Odell Beckham Jr. is on a Hall of Fame track. He was on it. He came off the track. We'll see if he can get back on it again with Lamar Jackson in Baltimore. Good luck with that. Um, But you got to be very careful before you overstate how much a guy has done. Like you just said, he was great. Three years. He was on a Hall of Fame track. He's no longer there. We'll see if he can get back on it. Uh, One other big signing on the weekend. I knew the Eagles were not involved in this. On a uh, well, I shouldn't say that. Uh, I did feel a couple calls on people saying they should attempt to trade for this player. Uh, Jeffrey Simmons signed a big contract extension with the uh, Tennessee Titans and uh, did take a call or two saying that's who are we show. Sure? We got an extra first round draft pick. Let's go get Jeffrey Simmons. And I get it. He's a really good player. He's one of the best defensive tackles in the National Football League. But they just let Javon Hargrave walk out the door because he was going to make over $20 million. So you know that if you trade for Jeffrey Simmons, he's trying to talk his way out of Tennessee. Why? He wants to get paid over $20 million per season. Oh, shockingly, he signs an extension this week for $92 million over a four-year deal. So he got his 22-plus. He basically got Javon Hargrave's contract uh, only with an extra year on the back end. Uh, I know that he would have been a phenomenal fit with the Philadelphia Eagles. But when you've already determined you're not going to pay a defensive tackle that kind of money, a guy who's just gotten you 11 and a half sacks, you're not going to trade for a different one who's a little younger. I get that. But they they have already laid out their salary structure, what they are or aren't going to pay. There was no chance they were getting a guy like Jeffrey Simmons. But I give him credit because 
He is one of the guys who got paid. I guess defensive tackle is still a position you're getting paid at in the NFL, Jay. Oh yeah. That's one of the that's one of the value positions. And look, he's a really good player. I mean, he's he's better uh than Javon Hargrave. So yeah, from that standpoint, he'd be great to have. But you're right, you're in a different phase. You can't just pay uh twenty uh, two million, twenty, whatever he got uh, to a defensive tackle. Because the, how many times have we got to say that the quarterback extension is looming? Um, it's a different phase for the Eagles. You can't go out and just spend monopoly money. Yeah, they do wonderful things with the salary cap and the, be able to manipulate it. But um, that doesn't mean you can have the highest paid player at every position. And he, he's number two now behind Aaron Donald. But <laughs> Um, yeah, it's a different phase. If it were last year and, and they were looking for a defensive tackle, same team instead of a wide receiver, uh, and it was a similar situation, they maybe could have pulled it off at this stage of the game. Yeah, you can't pull it off. Um, it's just the way it is. Um, great player, though. Great, great player. Um, and they probably, by the way, Tennessee was burned so badly by the A.J. Brown stuff that they weren't going to let it happen again. All right, let me, uh, before we get Jeff Carr up here and I give him a hard time for not stopping by and saying hi to me yesterday, um, I want to run a trade by you because uh, I had this conversation again on a broadcast I did this weekend about B. John Robinson and the Eagles sitting at number 10, Peter King, who's a uh, column I read every single Monday and respect the hell out of, um, suggested the Eagles should just turn their nose up at their history and go, yeah, we're going to take B. John Robinson. So we're daring you to stop Jalen Hurts and A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith and Dallas Goddard and now uh, B. John Robinson as well. Good luck. We're going to average uh, 35, 38 points a game. Um I don't think it's going to happen. You don't think it's going to happen. How he is pretty dogged about some of the stances he takes and a running back at number 10 is probably one that he's going to stick to. So let's say the Eagles trade out and we all believe that how he will be aggressive in attempting to move and dodge and shake and play Monty Hall on draft day. Cause he always does. And he usually gets the better of those deals. Let's say Bijan is the guy that people are targeting at number 10. And that's still, in my mind, value if uh, most of the draft experts have him as the second, third, at worst, fourth most talented player. You're getting him at number 10. Even at a devalued position, you can feel good about it and go, hey, we're getting value here. Uh, so I was looking at teams that I thought might be that uber aggressive that would move up and trade. And if you're looking at it from an Eagle perspective, how far down do you want to drop and what would you get in exchange for it? Let me run one by you. A team that I think could get aggressive and move up and get him and actually look at him as saving money uh, because he'd be on a rookie contract for five years. That fifth year would get expensive. But what about the Bengals? We know the Bengals have the probably three best three-man wide receiver set in the National Football League with Burrow. Add a B. John Robinson, their offense would be as prolific as the Eagle offense adding B. John Robinson. They draft at number 28. That's a pretty precipitous draft uh, drop. So you'd be drafting at 28 and 30 then if you were the Eagles. But you're coming out on all the blue chip players to get down to 28 if Cincinnati wants to pay to get up to 10. What would you look for in return if you're Howie Roseman? Would you rather have, you're certainly going to get their second round pick, maybe their second and their third, or would you rather have another future one? Would you want to see how he kicked the can down the road another year? He's done it a couple of years running now, getting that extra one in the next year. So yeah. he's a big time player in the draft the year after. Would you be willing to drop all the way down to 28 if you were Howie Rose? Uh, yeah, because I want to pick up picks. I, I don't want to pick up the future one. Remember, in the past, they were picking up future ones because they didn't like the, the – they weren't sure about Jalen Hurts. They didn't right. like the quarterback class, and they wanted to be in a position to do something if they had to do something at the quarterback position. I That, that has gone out the window. And now you got to pay the quarterback. So now you got to hit on, on, on guys, and it's a lot easier to hit at 10 – than it is to hit at 28. Now, I do think he wants to add, uh, if, for instance, I think he wants, he'll, he'll probably want to trade down from 30 
Um, so getting 28 is not as exciting to me. Um, and he wants to trade down to 30 to pick up some mid round picks because he's got a big donut in the middle rounds there. So that's the way I think, I think things have shifted for the Eagles because they have the quarterback. Those future number ones were about, all right, we don't like Kenny Pickett. Let's, let's kick back. Cause remember at this time last year, people have memory hold it. Mm -hmm. The Eagles weren't convinced that they had the long-term answer. And they said, well, next year's, Bryce Young and C.J. Stroud and all those guys, it's going to be better. Now, if Jalen Hurts laid the egg, which he did not do, he did the exact opposite, they might be thinking that way because next year's quarterback class, everybody's saying is better than this year's quarterback class. But that thinking's out the window now. Now it's about getting cost-effective difference makers around Jalen Hurts, and they have a chance to get two right off the top of the bat right off the top uh, on the first day of the draft. Again, I, I, it wouldn't surprise me if they wanted to move down from 30 to early in the second round to pick up some extra draft capital because those players, you know, might even be a little bit more cost effective in the same range. But no, I, uh, I don't think they would, they would take that dip. Yeah, uh, 20, 28 is pretty far. And again, and I, the future number one, not as important. Uh, as not, it was. You're right. But how he does like having flexibility and being able to dictate draft. He's going to be a big major mover and shaker in this year's draft, just like it was in last year. And I think he kind of looks forward to it. So that would put him. In oh, yeah. Position. He'll move up and down and, and backwards and forwards. But I don't think it's about the future as much anymore. It's, he's got to get some contributors in. Uh, five defensive starters. You know, you got to replace those guys. You and mean you talk you about think... Nicholas Morrow and Terrell Edmonds and, you know, the contracts tell you the story. They really do. I mean, it doesn't mean they can't do anything, but it tells you that the Eagles are not counting on them to do anything. Um, you know, one year, two million, one year, 1 1.2 million. It says what it says. Right. Because this year they had, uh, TJ Edwards on a one year contract and he up and left, and now they have to try and replace him. They acquired CJ Gardner Johnson on a one year contract, didn't get it extended. He up and left. So you can win with players who are on one year contract with expiring contracts. I'm not sure if any of the players they brought in are as good as the ones that they did watch walk out the door on the defense this year. He's John McMullen. I'm Johnny McDonald. We're the Mac and Mac Birds 365 guys. We're going to add to the Knicks, uh, Knicks another follically challenged friend of the show. Uh, Jeff Kerr <laughs> from CBSSports.com is going to jump in with us here on Birds 365. 